pressing problems today? Um, I think that we need to stop relying on um, like gasoline. A lack of education, hunger, uh, global warming. Health care for the minority. Food and water. Not finding enough alternative fuels. I think environmental issues like global warming. And stuff. Yeah, and like the whole oil issue. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of a big one. People are increasingly aware of the environment and the impact of war, pollution, natural disasters, and urban development on the environment. But there is less awareness of how scientists and engineers are using remote sensing technology to document, analyze, and solve global problems. The Intergovernmental Group on Earth Observation, called GEO, identified the following benefit areas. Disasters, health, energy, climate, water, weather, ecosystems, agriculture, and biodiversity. In this video, we'll explore those benefit areas, beginning with weather. Today, Earth observation is a major contributor to the weather forecast. You can't do the weather forecast without Earth observation. So the direct, the most uh, uh, readily available example of the benefit of Earth observation is the weather forecast. A lot of my work deals with uh, how to use satellite data and other data in a global observing system to better understand the weather. How to utilize that data to develop products uh, that one can then come about and use to uh, interpret and understand what's going on with the weather in the atmosphere. One of the most critical problems facing the world today is famine and hunger. Satellite data is useful in channeling resources to maximize agricultural productivity. Good satellite measurements and the analysis of, these, of this data will provide you information about the water, the hydric stress, whether there's a need for water or not. But it will be very specific for areas of fields so that now the farmers are able to add water where it's needed. And the same goes for pesticides. I mean, you need to, to put pesticides in the fields, but there's often no need to put them everywhere and you can select the areas where you can do that. That's called precision farming, and it's going to be considerably reducing the amount of chemicals that are put in the nature to, uh, for, for agriculture. Water management is critical for drinking, agriculture, and manufacturing. Many areas in the world have water shortages. We have uh, these uh, piezometric uh, gauges which measure the level of the water table, and now Remote sensing is entering into play because from space we can measure the level in rivers. In recent years, there have been many natural disasters, including the tsunami of 2004 and Hurricane Katrina. Satellites played a role in directing relief efforts. The devastation in the U.S. Gulf states from Hurricanes Katrina and Rita are without parallel. If you look at the um, sort of the chronology of events that took place, you see that our, our ability to predict landfall for hurricanes has in fact improved greatly, meaning where is the hurricane going to hit land, when is it going to hit land, how wide is going to be the area that's potentially hit, how severe, etc., so that populations can then take the necessary steps to evacuate. Now they, of course, flew airborne and helicopters um, and had videography so they were able to identify with GPS and the videography where the bridges were out and that sort of thing. But the imagery, and there was a huge amount of it collected, uh, is now being used uh, in the reconstruction effort. Predicting hurricanes is another matter. Graham Stevens, a scientist at Colorado State University, discusses what has been learned about hurricanes through the CloudSat mission. That process of water forming in clouds creates heat. And that's the heat. That heat fundamentally is the fuel that drives the formation of storms, including hurricanes. Uh, the warm SSTs and the water vapor that gets evaporated from the oceans, uh, that represents the fuel for these storms that form. But the furnace, the heat that's created that's, that drives these storms, occurs inside the clouds. When it comes to tsunamis, there is very little time for warning. Manuel Martin Nira of the European Space Agency discusses the challenges of tsunami prediction. A tsunami is a big wave that is generated uh, after a, a fault in the uh, bottom of the, of the sea. And this wave has a very large dimension, especially can be like 100 kilometers in, in length 
50 kilometers in, in width. We have this low Earth uh, orbiting satellite moving along the orbit. Every reflection point traces a line on the sea. So we don't get only one line of measurement, but we get several lines of measurements. And in this way, we can capture the structure of the tsunami wave propagating and in which direction and also in which extent we could successfully uh, catch up these tsunami waves uh, in less than one hour. Disasters can be man-made as well as natural. In either case, the information gathered from remote sensing can help alleviate the impact. Oil spills are a major source of pollution in, in coastal areas and can be detected from Earth observation and the, uh, the ships responsible for this, uh, these oil spills can be easily located through uh, current remote sensing capabilities. Earth observation is an evolving enterprise. As we launch more satellites with more sophisticated remote sensing technology, we continue to collect and analyze data for scientific inquiry and practical applications. Four, three, two, one. We have ignition and we have liftoff of NASA's Calypso. Remote sensing technology will continue to evolve and improve. The greatest challenge will be to apply what we learn and work with technology across international boundaries. Mm -hmm.